Photographing the sun is kind of like photographing the planets, but there's still a few differences in photographing the sun versus the planets. When photographing the sun, you might want to take advantage of lucky imaging. Now, yes, you can take photos and all, but lucky imaging is when you take videos and you basically try to take the best frames from the video and stack them together. Um, for example, like 20% of the frames are the best, so you take them and stack them together, those 20% of the whole entire video. Um, lucky imaging is a very widely used technique across planetary imaging, even though sun's not technically a planet, it still counts in that realm. So yes, lucky imaging will apply very well to that. Now, before you get into photographing the sun, make sure to get an ND filter, a really powerful one, or get a solar filter. Now, a solar filter, they can vary what types you get, but personally, I have the Spectrum solar filter right here. This is a pretty good solar filter. I like it because it's glass. This is not really a uh, paper one. I hate those paper ones. They're, they get scratches all over them. I really don't like it. It bothers me, but... Technically, I, that's why I like when you're using these. And I just prop it right up on this William Optics Xenoshare 61 right here. And it has these little tabs on it that make it fit on the William Optics Xenoshare 61. And it works really well. It fits actually pretty well. But yes, definitely make sure you have a solar filter. Without one, well, you will ruin your camera's sensor. I can almost guarantee that. Especially at those high magnifications. Something you really might want to consider is getting an HA dedicated chromosphere filter. Something like the Daystar Quark or a Lunt 40mm telescope. Mainly this will really help with like the chromosphere. It will pull out those extra details such as solar flares and all the um, chromosphere on the sun. All that kind of stuff will officially be pulled out and you won't have to deal with um, really pulling it out harsh and processing. Um, now you can't really see the solar flares on the sun even if you have a basic solar filter and you do really, really good processing to it. But you can see a little bit more of the chromosphere of the sun, not by much, but a little bit of it, a little hints there, here and there. I can technically see that in the sun, but um, it won't be as crazy looking as the HA solar filters will look. Now, when it does come time to process your images, make sure that you pretty much process your images to the maximum potential, especially if you don't have an HA filter. I found this to be very, very, very useful. Um, I maybe add a little bit of dehaze here and there, a little bit of upping the textures in Photoshop. This actually really helps pull out more of the details on the sun, such as the sun spots, a little bit of the texture of the actual sun itself. It really helps pull out some of the extra details. I don't have any filters except for a Spectrum Solar Filter. No extra filters. There's really nothing besides that filter. Now, what about framing up the sun? Now, you gotta be very careful when you're framing up the sun. So what I would recommend doing is using the mount that you have. Like if you have like a mount like mine, like an equatorial, definitely just do a fake polar alignment. Like let's say you don't have it set up or anything. Make sure to level it and do a fake polar alignment if you've already pulled a line and stuff, um, especially because you can't see the North Star during the day. Um, so I'd fake polar line and then I'd automatically slew to it. Um, and that way you don't have to actually frame it up and hope it can come across the camera kind of like slew around a little bit until you finally see a little bit of light coming into the side of the DSLR. And then once the light comes towards the, um, more towards the middle of the frame, then you want to slew based in on, on that direction. That's how I frame up the sun without her burning my eyes out. As I said before though, solar imaging and planetary imaging are actually very similar. So if you want to learn how to do planetary imaging, you might want to check out this video right here, which will help you get a great photo of the planets. Anyways, until next time, Clear skies.